Welcome back to an RPG Maker Unite tutorial. Today I'm going to show you multiple ways to map in Unite Editor. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to be using the Epic Game Store version of Unite. It's going to pop up this little hub here, and I'm going to make a new project. We're going to create a new project here. We're going to select where it's at. We're going to call it in Unity, and we'll just say Unite Tutorial. Hit Enter and select that folder. Then I'm gonna pick a version. This is the recommended version. While you can use Unity 6, this is still the recommended version. Hopefully that will change soon, but right now. And then I'm gonna select English, and I'm gonna go with just the base data only project. Now, this is gonna take about 10, 10, 15 minutes maybe. It's actually a lot quicker than it used to be, but still, I'm gonna get back to you when the editor loads up. All right, so the editor is done. I wanted to kind of let the process go so you can see that it was about 10 minutes that it took to load, which is significantly better than it was. I think it was like 40 minutes when it first came out. So this is a huge upgrade here. So now let's get to the mapping. All right, so the first method of mapping is just to create a new map and to use tile sets. So we can just say uh, map with tile sets, and then we'll just make it 10 by 10, that's fine. You can give it a display name, you can export it as an image, which we'll get to later. But then from right here, we can go to these layers right here and we can start to draw. So you got layer A and you can add tiles singly. So if I know that I want grass, I can just select grass and click OK. And then I can take this, come over here, select the paintbrush and just make the whole thing grass. The other thing that I can do is I can load a tile group, which is going to have the grass plus some. And so we can try to find where that one was. Let's see, was it? I don't know where exactly it was. So I'll just load the A right here and we'll load this tile group and then you can see that the other tile that I added is gone and it loaded up this fresh tile group now if I wanted that tile back I can go back to it I can say hey I wanted that tile back and matter of fact I want another tile like this for paths and so then I have it so this is on the a layer so if I go to B you can see that there's no tiles anymore so I have to do that same thing for this so for this one I'm gonna just go on this Click OK, and now I have this to make my path in. Control Z to get rid of that. Select the pencil. And now we can start making a path. Okay. And maybe we'll just go like that. Now, if you right click, you can get that tile just like the old RPG makers did, which is really nice. And so, yeah, you can just play with it how you want. And then if we wanted more, I can load up a group here. I could say, hey, I want some trees. And then we can start to plant some trees right here and let's say that this is the mountain mountainous part and it auto tiles just like it should and then the dead forest the poison forest i don't know yeah so that's basically what you can do so this is on layer b now if you want to test this you can easily do that by going to event right here and then you can just right click initial placement player and then we can just play test And we should be able to walk around. The collisions will be set. Except for the trees, they don't have collisions, but you can see that it has the transparent option. Now, where are the settings set for the tile sets? Let's go check that out next. They're set right here in map setting, register tile. And you can see that in the tile A, so these trees right here, you can see that they're set for forest. So that's how they get that transparent look. You can see that these mountains were set to cannot pass. Now you can see this can go under. So if we did set, go to a standard tile maybe, and then we'll just do like this volcano right here or this mountain. We can go to this one right here. We can see that it's a can go under and that it is accessible by that way. Then we can see that the base is not passable. And so in order to put this on, we can go to the map, we can edit it. We can either add that tile set or we can go and find that tile set which is right here and load this tile group now the cool thing is is you can change and load these tile sets as you want you don't have to stay to a tile set while you're mapping these tiles will be saved as basically part of the image now we can scroll down to here we can set up a and for this i want to go on the next layer so i'm going to have to load go to v load this tile group 
start to grab these and then grab the base which is not that's not it right here okay and so now if we play test this So it doesn't matter what location these are on the tile layer. That's kind of the whole point of this thing is to show that you could have the collisions on the A, B, C, D, and you could e even have can go under on either one. So, but that's how it works. You have basically four layers to start painting things with. And so let's just say I wanted to finish this up. I could go right here to A and load in a tile, let's just load in a tile, this one right here. And this one kind of goes off the beaten path and kind of goes into the mountain. We'll just say something like that. All right, so that is the first style of mapping. Just tile sets, you go on layers to get what you need. And then you do have a shadow pen if you want. So you could, I don't know if this would look good, but you can go like this. And then it would most likely be on like a side of a wall so that, Kind of not the best example. So you had a wall and give it some shadows. Sun is coming from this way. You have a little shadow pen. I know that the, that's in the regular RPG makers as well. Yeah, that's the first way of mapping. So that leads us to the next way of mapping, which is doing it via a background. So this is a map with background. Again, we can do whatever we want. We're going to leave the size just blank right here, or default, I mean. And then what you do is you can go to background and you can load an image. Now, this one, you can load an image from your actual PC. However, there are some pre-made images as well. So let's just say that you like one of these. And so first off, let me show you the, you can just load real quickly uh, image and boom, it's in. And you have some options here. You can scale it by two, scale it by no. Now, when you want to, let's test this here. So I'm going to place my player right here. So we can't move right now. And that is because we have not given a collision layer or a walkable layer. And so in order to do that, when you're mapping, you have to go to, when you place a background, you have to go to collision layer. And then you have to choose collisions and assign them. So this one I want to say is can pass, or it's actually default, can pass through all these directions and all this other stuff. You can put damage floor, um, percentage you can there's just a whole bunch of stuff you can do here's where you would add your vehicles if a boat can pass through this or not just real quick on that but basically you take that and then you just start painting where this player can walk so we're just going to let them walk kind of right here and then we have let's just say this option two is we want it to can pass you can pass it from all sorts of directions as well but let's say that it's a ladder so that when you're walking, no matter what direction you are, you're always looking up. And so what we would do is we take two and then we would put it on this ladder. And that is going to allow us to now walk. So if we play test this one, you can see that you can walk. And then when you go to a ladder, you can walk up. And then when you go down, you're still going to stay up until you get off the ladder and then you can walk around again. Now let's go and get out of here and then let's just go to the background now and let's add a one of these that come with the engine. Just add this one right here. So this one's pretty big, but we need to make it a little bigger. So the first thing we're going to do is go here and let's just see if 20 fits it. Okay, so it's 19. And let's go 15 maybe. Okay, so it's 16, All right? And so what we're gonna do here is, first I'm gonna move my player right here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go to my collision layer, and I'm just going to delete all of this. And so one thing is, is it kinda sucks that you have to place the areas that you're walking, but one easy way around it is, is to just mask all of it and then you erase the parts that you don't want the player to walk on. So that's just one easy way around it. And you can see maybe not, or actually no, I probably want those parts. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that as well. So 
This is the second way of mapping is using backgrounds. Now the cool thing is, is you can still tile on top of it. You could add a tile of this one right here and you can still place it on the map. That was obviously a horrible. And what it will do is it will take the collision based off of that. All right, so this leads to the third way of mapping, which we're just gonna create a normal, I'm just gonna do this, uh, the base size right here. We're going to do the tile system right here. And let's just add in this one. This is gonna be a very basic map here. We'll just give it like this and we'll give some path. Well, we gotta go to this one, load tile set, grab, this and then let's just paint like that okay so let's just say that you got this set up with your layers but for some reason it's not enough layers you need more layers well one simple thing that you can do is you can paint in this system and get it to a layer that you know can all be together uh, specifically on the ground and then what you can do is you can export image as a map so we could just do i don't know well undefined why not and then what we can do is we can go back to here now and we can delete everything. So we're gonna delete this. And then I, I forgot you can select the thing right here to easy delete. Okay. And now what we can do is we can say background. Oh, by the way, let's just load up the one that we had for the last. And now we have four additional layers that we can start mapping with. So I'm not gonna map just for the sake of time, but I'm sure you get the idea, is that instead of using a software, maybe a software like Photoshop or something would be easy to set up this as well. But if not, you have this option to set it up in the editor, save it as an image, put it as a background, and then start to go with your new four layers that you just recently got. And I'm gonna call this map with a mix background and tiles. I just wanted to throw in real quick that you can also utilize this show layer to kind of manipulate what you want to actually save when you're saving the file. For example, if I have this unchecked and I save this file, that little path that I had will not show up on the image. So then you could throw everything that you want on the background and you can kind of manipulate it like that. And so yeah, that is the three ways of mapping. If you are curious how to go about adding tiles and tile groups, registering tile data, specifically bulk assignments, I do have a video going over those. So if you are interested in learning more about that, you can go to my playlist for Unite where I show how to add tiles and tile groups. I also have an asset converter that makes adding these so much easier if you have DLC, which is free by the way, for the, for the, the jam duration. And then this is how you can bulk import images, which you're gonna wanna do eventually. Yeah, with that said, um, hopefully that helped you out, learn the a few different ways to go about mapping in Unite. If you have any questions, comments below. And with that, I'll see you at the next video.